Dr. Dave Twang. I'm Dave. So this is our um, companion piece for last uh, weekend's, it was a holiday weekend, so it might have come out on Monday, Sunday or Monday, um, of that, uh, uh, let's see, what's it called? Um, Blues in E. And the title something like, you know, mixing lead playing with your rhythm or something like that. It's the last full lesson that came out before this. Um, Just Show Me the Licks, which features a lot of stuff from the intro section of that video. Um, so, again, sometimes I'll take stuff and copy it pretty much note from note from that. I usually improvise those demonstrations in the main videos, but, you know, sometimes... You get some stuff that really kind of captures, I think, um, uh, what I'm trying to get across. And then other people reach out and say, hey, I really like that. You know, could you show us those licks? So here we go. Um, I'm going to zoom in here in just a second and take a look at it. Okay. All right. We've got you moved in here. Um, Let's start off with taking a quick look at that E7 sharp 9 chord. And that was one of the main things that was featured in that last video over the weekend, right? right so you got that kind of E7. And there's a diagram in there for it, but it's that it's that Hendrix chord. Okay, so that's just kind of our one of the real anchoring things about how we're approaching this particular riff, this jam. So here's what was going on just now. The things that I singled out. Now, if you know, some of you might have noticed already that this. Um, second time around I played the same notes but up here okay just wanted to demonstrate that and, and practicing in both of these um, positions will be really helpful for you because when you do let's start with that that first one let's just jump right in here um, one of the things that we did a, a few weeks ago a couple weeks ago was we were coming down like you know it's kind of a, a way of just starting, you know, a, a good blues lick in E. Well, another way to do that, the same idea, is to kind of come up from beneath. So we're, okay, that's just a really simple, you know, idea, but it just changes, you know, rather than starting, it's okay to just start on that root note. Let's see we went. Nothing wrong with that. But, <laughs> right, that just kind of puts an exponent on the, the, that, that note meaning that much, right? So that's what's going on there. And then, you know, we'll get up here and, and work on it as well. So let's go back to this first position for a second. So we're going from the D up to the E, which is our root for this E blues okay then I'm going let's break this down okay then this is what might be new to you and I don't want to mix these two up too much all at once but might be more familiar with it same notes but you know sometimes you want to stay around in this position you know if I'm okay so back to our, our our lick and we'll we'll spell this one out okay so I'm putting these two Matches those in sound. Use your ear, not just your eyes. Okay. 
okay get just get that much of it down you know halt it right here for a second if you need to practice that <laughs> Really get used to putting, taking those two and kind of tweak. Just do a slight. You don't have to. You barely have to move that, but just get that effect right, and then kind of let go of it. That's a really nice blues sound. Um, okay, so here we got. Okay, then we're gonna go. Um, So, okay, you really got to use your ear here. You know, we could map all this out, we could write it down, but it's it's the sound of it, it's that phrasing. I'm just going to play it a couple times. Okay, let me do that with the track. It works on... on in a couple of different places in the track, too. I could probably, you know. Okay, so here we go at the top of the progression. Now I'm going to do it over the A chord, check this out. whole phrasing there that's a whole statement of phrasing in this blues progression but you can use it on the e measures and the a right play around with different ways that you fit it in there so you know while we're at it let's just jump up here while we have our ear already hearing that right we're gonna play this that's the same notes but just in a different position. And, um, you know, it's more than just moving it to play the same thing, right? When you learn it here and you learn it here as well, you're, you know, you're, you're acquiring that muscle memory of these two positions, and it's not just for this riff, right? So I won't break that one down as much because it's the same phrasing and everything as... Okay. Take it slow at first if you need to. Let me play this over the track a couple times. Let's just see where we are. Let's try it over the A. back to the easy. So here we go again. Okay, that was the E, now the A. Alright. Another good thing about practicing this, doing this routine that, that that we just went through is it leaves a lot of space in between and you want to kind of train yourself to have phrasing that has a, a beginning, a middle and an end, right? Sometimes I get carried away when I'm doing the demos and I, it, you know, I just cram a lot of licks in there and that's okay. Um, but we really want to be mindful. That's an important part of our style and especially in blues improvisation is to, um, choose nice, places not to be playing right so that's that first one now i did a little thing i went um okay i'm gonna slow that way down it's not as crazy as it looks okay so you can slide in there you could just start right there too Okay, but 
I'll go ahead and do the slide because it's kind of nice to come in there. So you're kind of sliding up there and then. Okay, so let me really break this one down. Slide from the two to the four fret on that G string. Use your second uh, finger, your, your middle finger. Okay, usually I say use whatever fingers you want. That still applies, but you really need your fingering, you know, to work right here. Okay. That's your first practice right there. Slide it up from two to four, then hammer up here. And three and five, hammer and pull off on the B string. Okay. I know that doesn't sound like much yet, but just do that. Do it like 20 times. Okay, get used to that. Next thing, see what I added? Kind of just slide it back down. So it's like I'm going up here to do something, right? I'm sliding up there and going back, right? Climb up, do our thing, climb down. Okay, now we're breaking this into, you know, smaller phrases. And when you put it all together, it sounds really cool, but it could come out sounding a little bit different than what I'm doing. That's okay. Um, but these moves are what, what's important. So see, all I did was up, do our hammer pull off, back down, and then pull it off right there. different maybe for you then we're just gonna do a hammer or not a hammer just a note and pull off from two to open on this next string down sorry kind of sloppy okay I'm just gonna show you that a couple times slow If you picked every one of these or did some different order of picking and pull offs, you'd still get it. It's you'd, you'd still come out with something cool. So, okay. you could use some different fingers once you get down here if you wanted. Okay, then. chord there um, you know then great you're kind of good to go if you're still you know lining that up and it's taking you a second to make that chord that's fine just slow the whole thing down All right this is kind of a lick and you know this is one of those licks that you can you know modify just endlessly right you could right not suggesting that you're going to be doing that right away but you know go through that part where i really broke that down again a couple times like back it up and really work on that okay here's what what ideas of where you can put that in here like going back into the whole thing <laughs> you see what I did I kind of jumped the gun like a beat too early or something so I just did like an extra 
you know, a pull off down here or something. So, um, wasn't exactly what I planned on doing, but in that, um, demonstration part, I, I, I time it a certain way or whatever. Don't get too hung up on that. Cause you know, you want to be versatile and be able to kind of sneak stuff in, you know. Let's just try it. a lot right you know getting the timing to put it have it land in a certain place don't get hung up on all that um you know making it come out perfect just just work on that even without the backing track i think it's better sometimes to practice stuff like that and just kind of do your own thing with it right um one more thing on this little turnaround with the B7 and the, um, the C7 and the B7, sorry, the, okay, um, couple things, you could just do a piece of the triad like this, Just mess around with that. And then there's one more I want to show you. I did it in that in that demonstration at the beginning of this one. Is kind of a Steve Cropper, kind of a blues, uh, what he, a soul man, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, idea there. It's. And some of you might see right away how that connects to this sort of kind of um, six harmonies like that. But I'm just going to show you right on the 12th fret with the G and the high E string and then just move it down. Just like you would the chord, you move down one. show you what that's like over the track. Okay. Oh, there it was. So we'll go back to the top and I'll play a few of these licks. I just I just played the chord right because that's what the, that that main lesson was about was kind of switching back between the chord and the and the licks and stuff. So hopefully that all makes sense and you can work that into your routine. Okay, um, leave some comments. Let me know how you're doing and um, I just love hearing the progress that everybody's making and and great ideas that you all have about the channel. Okay, appreciate you. See you next time. Thank you.